<sighs> Man, it's like dumb to do this at the end of the day after I'm like tired of and can't think anymore. Yeah, but, but no one watches you for A, <laughs> how you look, B, what you say. It's just the physics that they care about. Well, um, hopefully we'll get to the physics without messing it up. Let's rewind a bit. In 2021, Tesla did something extraordinary. 0 to 60 in 1.98 seconds in the Model S Plaid, smashing all other production cars. Okay, but with a caveat, that was Motor Trend's time with Tesla's support at Tesla's chosen track with a drag strip covered in glue and all of the car's temperatures and conditions set for the perfect run. Oh, and deleting the first foot of rollout. This Lucid Air Sapphire matched that 1.98 second time exactly. Yes, with the same sleazy first foot of rollout deleted, but with two people in the car. My bag of gear, the air conditioning on, the battery not preconditioned, and on a public road surface. No glue, with just a few attempts made. If you get closer to Tesla's conditions, a prep surface with rollout, my 0 to 60 time was 1.85 seconds. That was my second attempt ever in the car, in a car that had already run down the drag strip half a dozen times before I got into it. That's 13 hundredths quicker than the Tesla without ideal circumstances. It's capable of even quicker, despite Lucid's public claim of 1.89 seconds. Hello everyone, and welcome. This is two Jasons Jason. in one car. Jason squared. Jason squared. So you used to work for Motor Trend. Now you sell car insurance for Haggerty, is I that? I do not <laughs> sell, I am not licensed. I am not allowed to talk about insurance. I okay. produce entertaining video content about cars uh, to make you all fall in love with the name Haggerty. And I think what's interesting uh, that the internet doesn't realize is like, I think the number one misconception about you, people probably don't think you're that smart, but like truthfully, you do know a lot about cars. Would you say that? I think you can know a lot of things without being smart. I mean, I'm a smart okay. No, thank you. I mean, that was nice. I mean, he's a nice guy. No, no, no. When the camera's running. It was running, supposed to be, a, it was literally supposed no, to be a dig and that I'm saying most people think, think you're, you're an stupid, idiot. Yeah. yeah. But um, like, you actually know a couple <laughs> things about cars. I try to. Okay. I mean, I had a, listen, I did three and a half years of mechanical engineering. And I did I, four, so not that much more. Right, and I couldn't deal with all of the other mechanical engineers. I'm like, I gotta change my major because I can't deal with these people. We're an awkward bunch, um, for yes. sure. We're socially inept and good looking. Yes, <laughs> yes we are. Um, but yeah, so I think like an engineer in a lot of ways, but in a lot of ways, uh, act like an idiot. <laughs> Well, we are sitting inside of the Lucid Air Sapphire. It is the most powerful Lucid, 1,234. If you have a trouble remembering it, one, one two, two, three. three. Which one's, what was it after? Five. Five, okay, one, 1,234 horsepower, uh, which is more than the previous most powerful Lucid, which was 1,100. One one. Yes. So, you think that maybe Lucid just kind of made those numbers up? Yes. It's for somewhere sure, in the ballpark. For sure. Yeah, it's like close enough, and they're like, let's just say this because yeah. it's easier to remember. Yeah. Now, this one is yet somehow substantially way quicker than that one 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 one. Was that too many ones? Maybe. One 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 one. No, you did four. You pulled off an eight point nine something second quarter mile this morning. Oh, thank you for bringing that up. And what was your time in the quarter? Uh, 9.04? 9.04, so pretty impressive. Uh, it can do an eight second quarter mile. So 8.95 was my time. And my zero to 60 with rollout, uh, which I don't believe in, but I'm trying to find that the real raw data was 1.85 seconds. So insanely quick. Now this is a prep surface. Um, yeah, and, it, and that's with rollout. So there, there are some variables there, but the car is insanely quick. And the thing about this versus the 1111 Lucid Air is we have three motors instead of two. Now, why does that matter? Well, if you if you look at just the peak horsepower output, right? 1111 11 to 1234 doesn't sound like much. Yes. And that's obviously why Lucid didn't publish the Sapphire's horsepower number initially, because that would lead you to believe that it's barely noticeable. I mean. Realistically, you shouldn't be able to notice that. Yeah, not a big a jump. Percent. But 
what happens is the standard car has two 600 horsepower and motors. Uh, they can't both get full power at the same time because the battery is limited to about 1111. Um, and when you're on a full throttle launch, you're using all of what the rear motor can do and maybe two thirds of what the front motor can do because you have that weight transfer, car leans back. Yes. Um, and it's got more traction available at the back than 600 horsepower worth. Um, so on a launch, you're using 600 rear, maybe two, 300 on the front is all I can put down, yep. and that's it. So your traction limited up front in the GTP, mm -hmm. uh, and you are power limited in the rear. Right. With this car, you are traction limited both in the front and the rear yeah. because they threw in another motor back there. So there are three motors instead of two, each capable of 600 horsepower. You have a maximum of 1234 to work with, which you can put wherever you want, literally wherever you want. Well, but, up to 600. To, yes, up right. to 600 at each at each motor, which is yeah. like a really different strategy that like we're not used to in cars yeah. because we're used to combustion engines. We have one engine, it's making one amount of power at that point, and you can play tricks to put torque in different ways but you don't have three independent power sources. Right. So that's a pretty wild way of thinking like you have this pool of power in the battery and then how you distribute that pool of power is up to you know the software engineers of this vehicle. And it's like, it's a really clever solution in a drag race of just sending way more to the rear and you get an insane launch, 1.85 seconds with rollout and under nine seconds uh, in the quarter mile, which is absurd. This is my first time ever going under 10 seconds in the quarter. Were you on video when you did? I did, I did record it, yes, did you, I'll have it. Did you say things that you're not allowed to I say? I didn't shout YouTube? profanities, but here's the thing. I, I daily drive a Model 3 Performance, and no, okay. like, this is not the same thing, but it's very quick. A Model 3 Performance is very quick. You're hitting like 0.8 Gs, 0.9 Gs pretty consistently, versus this, you know, 1.3 or something like that, 1.4 maybe uh, peaking. So it's a, it's definitely a jump, but it's not like, oh, I've never felt that before. I mean, I haven't. You I haven't. haven't. Well, I was gonna say. But, I, but uh, like, you know, at a certain point, you're just like, whoa, you're thrown in your seat. Like it was, it was definitely new to me. And it was like, wow, but I wasn't swearing. I, look, the only car that I've ever driven that comes close to this is Rimat, Nevera. Okay, I've never driven that. The, the fact that, and that, that was measurably quicker than this. I've never, I'd never put instrumented testing numbers on that car, yes. I think. But that was uh, holy good. Yeah. I can say that, right? Yeah, holy, you can say whatever you good. want. Um, and the thing and is, the I have a, a, an audience of eight-year-olds, so I edit it for uh, them, okay. so, so that the eight-year-olds can still watch. Okay, so for you, you can say whatever you want, and you just go Yeah, the Nevera is unbelievable. I mean, it's really, scarcely believably fast. Yes. The crazy thing about this car is it's a packaging miracle. Right? It it's is a, a packaging miracle. And it's this ultra smooth, ultra quiet, rides really well, ridiculously spacious luxury car that can effectively keep up. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> there was four wheels burning. There was a four wheel it rolling four burnout wheel at burnouts. 35 yeah. miles an hour. It's, it's the fact that this doesn't compromise anywhere that makes it so unique yeah and also like the drop off is like so again i don't want to be like oh a model 3 performance is similar because it's not yeah like you have an initial punch of acceleration it's not nearly as hard and then the drop off is way way quicker 60 miles per hour after it's just like it's not quite there anymore this is pulling 156 miles per hour in the quarter yeah. which is like it's still hauling as you're going down that 156 at sonoma which is uphill and almost always into a headwind I mean, that is nuts. Only it, true professionals could get it into the eights. Yeah, apparently. I got a one eight seven zero to 60, I think it was. It's the, easily the fastest zero to 60 I've ever experienced with any measuring devices. Um, it did it again and again and again. I mean, we had, yep. what, eight journalists each getting two runs, and it just, they were, the slowest of them all was 9.5. Like a 9.1, yeah. Right, I mean, it's just, for an hour. 9.05 again and again, again and again and again and again. Just yes. nuts. One of the cool things about vehicles like this, when you have this much power and you're kind of at certain theoretical limits of like modern capabilities, is zero to 60 versus 60 to zero. And you've actually done a video on this. It's a really interesting position of 
you know, what should be quicker, a zero to 60 or a 60 to zero? And with almost every single production car that's ever existed, the 60 to zero braking is better than the acceleration. And this is one of those few cars that can actually switch that. Yeah. Now, do you know why? Well, two things. Number one, you're looking at weight distribution, right? So when you're on full braking, you have a lot of weight transfer forward. Yes. And at full acceleration, you have a lot of weight transfer rearward. And so you've got larger tires rear in, in some exactly. cars. Yeah, so like something kind of like a Porsche 911 has such great braking performance because it's got so much rate, weight in the in the rear that it can take advantage of the rear wheels under braking yes. more so than a front engine car can. Um, so almost always you have braking, you have tire grip that can be maxed out at all four corners at maybe let's say 10 times a second. So 10 times a second, the ABS unit can lock and unlock each one of those wheels. So yep. they're effectively at or near their max continuously. No cars effectively prior to the last couple of years have had the ability to overwhelm all four tires th from zero to 60 the whole way. And certainly not the ability to modulate the, the engine's output. So yes. on an internal combustion engine, right, like you said, you have one power source, Yep. but the, your ability to cut power and add power back in, even on something with that's naturally aspirated with independent throttle bodies and modern by injector, you know, by cylinder injected so it can cut power or limit power to one cylinder at a time that makes those rat noises. <laughs> you're still looking at on the order of once or twice a second to be able to add power once you've cut it back. Yep. If it's turbocharged, you're looking at way slower than that because you're waiting for boost to build back up. Lucid did this stability and traction control internally, and I know this because they told it to me, but also when I did the video with that prototype, Sapphire, they wrote the traction control software <laughs> on site. <laughs> yeah, they had arrived, they did a four wheel burnout, they started typing numbers. They're, They're like, this is what traction is, let's optimize it for this exact scenario. Un they, they programmed a certain amount of wheel slip in and just went for it and just kept going until they beat the plaid effectively. And then we called that number good and that was what we, what we went with. And of course now they've had another year to work yes. on. Yes. But that system operates at 1000 Hertz. Yes. Which means- What's a Hertz? this. Bam! That hurts! That hurts! Um, <laughs> it is cycles per second. Yes, a thousand times per second you can adjust the torque output of the motor, which is extraordinary. Now, I asked them about this though, in like, in reality, how many adjustments do you get ABS versus traction control? Yeah. And I was talking with their uh, traction control and dynamics team and they were saying, in reality, once you consider, you know, you have, you have a, a tire, right? It's not just this thing that can handle a thousand adjustments per second. Once you get from that tire back to the electric motor and back and you have all this feedback loop, you get about 25 adjustments per second based on reacting to whatever that tire is doing mm -hmm. with traction control. With ABS, in reality, you get somewhere about two adjustments based on what you're reacting to per second. So think about that. I mean, it's over an order of magnitude, more adjustments per second to optimize based on what you're driving on. So that's just insane. And so as a result, it means you can go this way <laughs> faster than you can go this way. Yeah. Well, the other thing, remember, so braking has one other advantage, which is that it has control of all four wheels. Yes. This car only <clears throat> has control over three, three. wheels, right? Yes. So it, can have wheel spin on one front wheel and not the other. So you, there could be a situation where under acceleration, you're maxing out one of the front wheels and not the other. Yes. But in reality, this has got to accelerate faster yeah. than, than it breaks. And also you could have a slight help with aerodynamic drag yep. in braking. Yep. This is a very aerodynamic vehicle, so it's not that big of a roll, especially at low speeds like 60, 60 to zero. Yeah. yeah. It's insane, it is disorienting. So when we first tested, sorry to re refer back to that video, but we first tested uh, Is this just a plug for your video the no. whole time? No, I'm, just I'm trying to illustrate you. something. You're allowed yeah. to plug your own stuff, if you want to call it that. Oh, I'm not calling that, I'm not gonna use that word. Jason, you have eight year olds watching this, how <laughs> dare you? Um, no, but it was very interesting. Randy Popes, who we work with a lot, SCCA Hall of Fame race car driver, we work with him because he's, safe, he's consistent, he doesn't ever wreck cars. Does he hard. also sell car insurance? Uh, he does not sell car insurance, <laughs> but he is unbelievably fast and consistent, and he's funny and all the rest of the stuff that, that we love. Randy got out of the Tesla Plaid and thought the car had no brakes. 
And the reason he, it wasn't a capacity issue, he just said it's got no brake bite and it doesn't slow down. In fact, it doesn't have good brake bite or didn't at the time, but it does slow at the same rate as like an M5 CS, which we had on, 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 uh, on hand at the same time. You are so used to a car being able to brake so much mm, harder yes. than it can accelerate that that's the real danger of a car like yes. this is it accelerates harder than it brakes. And that makes you think, oh, there's no brakes. Well, no brakes because it's pulling a G in a straight line of acceleration. Yes, and they are heavy, like to, to Randy's credit in saying like, oh, it doesn't have brakes. It's like, it is potential that you could get into a scenario if you keep doing these laps that you get these brakes very hot because they are very heavy. In this case, it's got carbon ceramics, they're massive. It can handle, you know, track driving. Um, but if you're on steel brakes and they're slightly undersized, like, yeah, you get one good, you know, 70 to zero, whatever it is. But if you keep doing that, you can get the you're gonna, look, you're get, you know, you're dispensing that much power, you're, which means the battery and the motor and everything else is going to be, a, be generating a ton of heat plus, but it has the ability to cool itself. Your brakes yes. don't have AC lines going to it. Yes. And so we did three, I did three really, what I would call eight to nine tenth laps in, of Laguna Seca in this car. And the brakes were fragrant. Um, but they held up perfectly. Is that healthy for your lungs? Yes. Okay, it's, uh, good. Well, it's so carbon. That. It's what Car we're made out of. <laughs> <laughs> hey, exhaling carbon is how uh, you get rid of your body's mass. It's what... People think it's pooping. It's not pooping. It's breathing. It is actually breathing. You're yeah. right. That's why you're so thin. He's sitting over there. I'm over there like... <laughs> panting. <laughs> like always. Like when I'm off camera, I'm just exhaling. Panting, yeah. Only exhaling. <laughs> so here's a question I'm genuinely curious if you know the answer to. So it's quizzing uh, you at this moment. No pressure. Oh, God. Why are the quickest EVs the heaviest EVs? Weight is the enemy of all performance. Yes. But it really isn't because you can make up for weight with power, right? So it's the enemy of long-term yes. performance because you're gonna wear tires and all the rest of the stuff. Yes. But more more weight is more grip. And we these cars are all grip limited, so you, you put a huge battery that can deliver an enormous amount of energy quickly. Yes. And then you have big motors and you manage the weight transfer and so ultimately you get a faster launch than something that's lighter. Okay, so I feel like it's a fine theory. Um, you're super wrong. No, you're not. You're not that wrong. <laughs> I'm just, here's, here's, I'm, here's, no, it's a fun question. So the challenge with EVs, just like this Lucid, okay, we have a 600 horsepower motor. We have two 600 horsepower motors in the back. That's 1800 horsepower. But this car doesn't have 1800 horsepower. Why yeah. not? Because it's limited by the battery. It's output. limited by the battery. So that is the answer. That is why the fastest EVs are the heaviest because in order to be very fast, you need a lot of power. Cabling. Yeah. And in order to have a lot of power, you yeah, need a massive battery. battery. And so with having a massive battery, you have a larger discharge rate. So in other words, like what percentage of that battery's juice can you throw out at any one given moment? Mm -hmm. If you have one battery cell, just yeah. one, right? The thing's not gonna be quick. If you have this much, oh, <laughs> if you have this much gasoline left, in right. your Shelby GT350, mm -hmm. you still have still all have the, the power. Same, right. And so the thing is with electric cars is you must have a massive battery in order for them to be quick. And that's like the sad reality of today. So all the quickest EVs weigh an insane amount in order to get that peak power number high. But there is no penalty to weight, right? Well, the penalty to weight isn't that great. Like, yeah. like tires today are such that 4,000 pounds, 3,000 pounds, they don't care for a brief amount of time. Right, okay. For good. a brief amount good. of time. For long time. you did a video on that, didn't no, you? No, yes, absolutely. Video <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think it's just really interesting that like we're, we put ourselves in this situation where the car has to be heavy yeah. because it has to have a battery. Now, there are such things as power cells and energy cells, and this has energy cells, right? So they're going for uh, a lot of energy and a smaller amount of space so that this thing has 417 miles of range or whatever the stated claim is. If they wanted, they could go with power cells and give it more power and just give you less range. So there, there is a trade off there. Things like the Chevy uh, Volt actually had like pretty good power cells mm -hmm. so it could get high output with a small battery. But it's an interesting thing to think about. Right, As the Lucid was making the battery packs for Formula E, for example. Yes. And they had a very small capacity but could discharge that very, very quickly. Yes. So they were relatively light. Okay, I think I probably know the answer after watching you just hoon around in a parking lot and make an extraordinary amount of smoke and destroy the tires. But what would you say is your favorite thing about the Lucid Air Sapphire? It's actually not speed. 
So I know that it's it, not the burnout. It's not the burnouts. You it's didn't not look happy when you got out of the car. Yeah. No, that was awesome. That was completely awesome. <laughs> but it's one thing to have a lot of power and be, how do I say this? To be nice to Tesla. Absolutely horrendous <laughs> at chassis tuning. The, the Plaid is one of the worst cars I've driven in terms of Dang. chassis tuning. Right? I have just, not driven it. Oh, so I, I got in it and spun it immediately. And I don't like, I, I act like an idiot for film and do that, but I yeah. don't spin cars unless I'm trying to do that on yeah, purpose. Yeah, you're a pretty good driver. I, tr I tried to be. And I the thing is, when you don't thing, have much going for you, you got to stick to something. Some things got to work, right? I mean, something I tried to <laughs> myself and it just <laughs> didn't work. No, there, you know, I should never get in a car, turn everything off, and spin it on the first corner. And I did. And there was no steering wheel where I thought there was a wheel because oh, that's the steering wheel was super annoying. And I the, did drive the Model yeah. X with that, and it was. Ugh. And the car scared the devil out of Randy. It just, it's not good. This is, and I'm going to make a very big statement here, the best handling passenger car ever made. And a passenger car, I mean, let's let's ignore. That's a statement. That's for yeah, sure a statement. It's a statement, but it does, you know, like, oh, is a 911 GT3 RS in there? Guys, it's not really a passenger car, it right? Isn't. It isn't. This is a luxury car. You're saying car. like four doors, or you're just saying passenger car? It could car. be four, anything that seats four people. Put it that okay. way, right? So anything that's meant for transportation. I genuinely don't think I've ever driven anything that follows driver's wishes. Yes. So the the big, the, my favorite part about this car is it seems to have a complete understanding based on my inputs, inputs of what I want. And then it does things to make that happen even when they violate the laws of physics. Yes. And so one of the things we haven't touched on with, with two motors in the back is that I can be requesting, let's say, 1% of power, right? Let's say I'm requesting 100 horsepower to cruise at 80 miles an hour. I, or I could be requesting zero, zero power at all. But the computer can apply 600 horsepower to one rear wheel and 600 horsepower worth of drag to the other. That'd be an extreme example. Extreme but yes. example, <laughs> but you, you'd be driving straight ahead and the steering wheel wouldn't go and you would go into low earth orbit. You yes. Would... So the, the car and its computers and those motors can change the direction of the car without you moving the steering wheel. The best example I can give of torque vectoring is I did years ago on Motor Trend, was a wheelchair. Wheelchair doesn't have a steering wheel, but you, yes. can, you can turn. Yes. This car's torque vectoring is so perfectly tuned that it was always neutral no matter what I did. If I was surprised. So I'm not that great of a driver, so I don't like giving like very finite detail about like a driving experience, I'll do it but for I you. was <laughs> surprised on track how neutral it behaved and I kept it in full everything on. literally full everything and it was still playful it would still get a little sideways and what was really interesting is the first time i felt the back kicking out it's like instinctively i correct with mm -hmm. the steering wheel the second time i was like "Ooh, i could feel it when i corrected that it was actually messing around with the motors mm -hmm. so the second time it did i said i'm just going to leave it i'm going to keep my hands where they are and keep my foot down and it figures it out with the motors your steering angle so it was like wow it corrected what i was asking it to do right without didn't even me have doing to, anything. Yeah. And then I turned it off. I had everything fully, fully off. <laughs> um, and at the, at, with permission. And yes. uh, it is <laughs> Daddy actually, said it was okay. Daddy said it was okay. It, it's actually a little bit difficult to control. There's no question this car would be faster on a racetrack in track mode. Yeah. Because then it's easy to manage. It's brilliant. But then when you turn everything off, it becomes a complete and total hooligan, but it doesn't bite. And so, so that it's understood, track mode is a step below yeah. everything off. Track mode actually does have an assistance, and they even said themselves that it tends to be the case where track mode will be the fastest. Oh, uh, there's no question. I was so much faster in track mode because you're managing the back of the car in with everything off. So okay. every time you give throttle, it's yes. doing everything it can to get you to no steering to yes. a four-wheel drift. But it didn't bite. I mean, I and the other the thing is it can it do, it can change things under braking. So I came in, there's a chicane that's a 90 degree right and then a 90 degree left. And I came in a bit too fast, probably 15 miles an hour fast, which is bad. 
Um, yes. And so I, I've, I'm under ABS and I thought, okay, well I can just go straight across the dirt or I can just flick it sideways and see what happens. So I did a Scandinavian flick, so left and then right, and it got the car beautifully sideways under ABS, which is difficult wow. to do. And then in the middle of it, I flicked it back the other way, gave it gas and turned it into a power slide that needed this much opposite lock and just laid four tires on the way out of there. It was genuinely picture perfect and I look like a hero, but it was the car doing it. Actually, I described it the same way and that it, and that I felt full everything on mode was also hero mode and that like, I could be an idiot because that's what I intentionally well, did. Are. I was like, I am an idiot, yes. <laughs> However, in this moment, I was intentionally not giving it the steering correction mm -hmm. and it would just figure it out. And it's yeah. like, oh, that's so easy. But it's not boring. No, it's not. That's it's what not. I like. There's still drama. It has drama, which was like, wow. Yeah, how is yeah. it possible that something that's perfectly silent should probably floor it on this stop sign? And you know, yes. how could something that makes no noise have, have drama? Oh. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> it just doesn't. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> Do you imagine like being an Uber driver and it just not having your passengers have any idea what this thing is capable of? It is of like kind of understated. Yeah. I need to do that as like a as a secret like hidden camera thing and just watch people pass out. All right. I don't even know what you said your favorite thing was. Uh, just handling. 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 Okay. My favorite thing is like it is a packaging marvel. So much so that I have an entire video dedicated to explaining the cool packaging of it. So if you'd like to check it out, you should. All right. Biggest drawback. Biggest complaint of this car to you? It was the, it was the, it was the flashers, wasn't it? The hazard lights? Let me, when, when a company spends billions of dollars and uh, I don't even know, hundreds of thousands of man hours making yes. a product, right? There are so many things that could go wrong. We are, I am, you are to, to as well, a critic. Right? We're there to criticize things, so it's easy. I'm a, an attractive internet personality. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I'm That's just what a, I tell my family. Okay. Oh, uh, do they, are they believing you yet? They I mean, told me I was attractive. They were the ones that said it. It wasn't me, not mm -hmm. my words. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it's my job to be a critic, right? It's my job to tell yes. you this is what's good, but this is bad. And the bad things are always what I see first. It's easy to look past a good ride, right? Well, you're always noticing what you're what you're yes. seeing instead of what you're missing, right? The, this, when I came in from the dynamic evaluation on the track, I had two things to say. One was I would really like a little bit more yes. uh, travel from the steering wheel. I wanted a little closer to me. Um, and that'll give it like a, a quarter of a demerit point. The biggest problem with this car, genuinely the biggest problem, is that the display for the emergency flashers got out of sync left to right. I'll, I'll give you the, I'll airdrop the video to you so you can put okay, it in here. Great. But it's like, good dink, good dink, good dink. And it's such a stupid little thing that would tell a potential customer they have not had Spent attention to detail. $250,000. Well, well they just, the company that did this car didn't have that attention to detail. Yes. And that is so not the case. Yeah, it's true, actually. It's, There's a, an extraordinary amount of attention to detail I in this case. This, pr that prototype almost a year ago, and this is just now done. They have spent a year taking a car that was spectacular and making it viceless. Okay, I don't love the infotainment system, stuff like that. All that I can live with, yes. I can't live with the blinker display. That's a ridiculous thing to say that that's my least favorite thing about the car. What is yours? Uh, I would say my least favorite thing about the car is like just a general trend of EVs of like put everything into an infotainment system behind a screen and like you have to figure it out every time. And there are certain things that like you will feel are right for you that is just not what the designer thinks. And so you end up messing around with these screens and you get really frustrated and it's like there are so many simple things of like adjusting mirrors adjusting steering wheel uh you know turning on your windshield wipers that kind of thing where you're used to it because you've driven this thing that's a certain way and i don't like to believe that like things shouldn't change i just think that like if certain things should change for the better not just change for the yes, sake of change yes it's like okay it's simpler to not have a button it's like well that's true but is it really annoying to not have a button I'm with you. Yeah. I think that, I mean, I'm so, I sort of was half joking about the turn signal thing. It does give you the impression that there was an attention to detail, but really this car's biggest problem is, and always has been, the infotainment system. Yes. It's unnecessarily complicated, even just moving a mirror, which you pointed out, you, you do once. To, yeah. But 
I don't want it to be irritating. I don't want the system to be slow to load. I don't want to have to wait through menus to do things that... The other thing is like, it'll show dual maps. And so you'll have maps here and maps here. And you're like, okay, well, why do I need what? maps on both? At any point, like if you're using CarPlay or something like that, like you just want it to be one does one thing, right. the other does the other yeah. thing and not synced. I understand. So for some reason, they're both synced. They're, well, the idea was that you should be able to swipe things up and down, I think, if I yeah. remember correctly. But in practice, what works best in screens and cars is things never move. Like I want the same the controls like a real button to never move, which reduces the benefit of the spring the screen in the first place. Yes. Which is why just put buttons in the car, um, FFS. But yeah, the the infotainment is less than perfect. But that's the case for almost everything. Yes, in in 2023 and 2024 model years, yes, it is a very frustrating time. But I would say like Tesla doesn't have as big of an internal like just resistance towards figuring it out initially i feel like they've done i i cannot stand the fact that they got rid of stocks and they're putting turn signals on a steering wheel and they're removing even more features than they have but i feel like their interface itself actually works pretty well i agree i agree the the lack of stocks is just stupidity yes right? and this is just either that's cost saving obviously yes or it's Elon edge, and yes. nothing against Elon, but Elon's not a car guy in the same way that uh, I am or you are. Look, he's made this company that has just changed the world, and yes, I think that's sure. amazing. But anyone who's a real driver would never put a. <laughs> you have to bleep that one out. <laughs> no one as a driver would put a, a yoke in a car. And no yeah. one's a driver. I mean, it was stupidly Ferrari did those, those freaking turn signals on the wheel. Yep. And they're just not better. And I, I just, I, I'm, I'm sorry. They, they're, Tesla's going down crazy hole, crazy land in a lot of ways. Okay. Speaking of crazy hole, Tesla, or on the subject, $250,000 is the price tag for the car we are sitting in. Mm -hmm. A Tesla model plaid, which you could argue is like the closest competitor from like a, on paper, these things look similar-ish, mm -hmm. is $90,000. That's unbelievable. It I is, mean, un their price point is unbelievable. So I guess my question is, does the price tag for this make sense? And then follow up, does it make sense in context of a Tesla Model S plaid? Uh, yeah, it absolutely makes sense because the Model S Plaid is a one-trick pony. It is a really fast car that's very efficient, um, and it's it's a very good car in a lot of ways. But there is no contest. That's like saying I'm trying to think. That's like saying, well, a Hellcat can do. It can also do a has a thousand horsepower. Right. I mean, but you want to compare a Hellcat and a 911 GT? <laughs> You're saying something? <laughs> so good, yeah. You, it's, it's like comparing a Hellcat and a GT3 RS, right? There's a there's a finesse to the Porsche 911 GT3 that makes it a well-rounded, spectacular driver's car that's yes. missing from a Hellcat. Look, I love, like, give me a Charger wide-body stat pack any day. Like, I love a big, dumb, rear-wheel drive, yes. happy car. But you, you're not comparing them just based on speed. And comparing this and a Model S, just because they both are fast, is dis. It's myopic. Okay. You're just looking at like, and, and like I'm not trying to take sides with Tesla mm -hmm. here, but do you think it is worth, you know, two and a half times? Cause that's a huge jump. Is it worth to, let me ask it a different way. Is a Bentega worth two times what an Audi Q7 is? No. No, I'm too pragmatic for this discussion like in the beginning. This is the problem. We're yes. both pragmatic, and that's why I wanna say no. Yes. But there is like a pragmatic explanation in that like Tesla has serious volume right now and Lucid is this fresh new company with this fresh new idea with their own take on it and you know they don't have volume. So if they don't have volume the price cannot be competitive at this point. So there's so much care, there is so much care that goes into a single product, the Lucid Air, which is like 
really beautiful to see in the engineering world because it's like they feel like to me an example of where engineering wins above all else yes. like engineering is king everything else like will fall into place maybe yeah. but but they don't care about that they care about the engineering and it like must be perfect it must be as good and as close to perfect as we can get. Mm -hmm. And so they do all these little steps to get there, and I find it extremely admirable. And I think the unfortunate side is, you can then take this simplistic view of say, well, $90,000, I can buy this. And it's like, ah, you can. I mean, you really can. But but like, it's so much more respectful to me, like what they have done with this. Listen, nothing against Tesla. The yeah, Tesla no, changed the world. Agreed. But Model S is an old, old car, car now. Yes. And it had a lot of compromises baked in initially, but it's still, a, it, it evolved the state of the automobile without question. Yes. Hats off to Tesla for doing that. And for now making something that can do zero to 60 in two seconds. For $90,000. For $90, it's unbelievable. However, Lucid has, in my mind, taken all of the best attributes of Lotus, Mercedes-Benz, Porsche, Jaguar, and combined them all into one car that is purely engineering-led. So from, a, from an engineering perspective, from a driver perspective, from an ownership perspective, this car changes the game. From a business perspective, I'm worried. Yeah, no, same, because I feel like I only think like an engineer and the world constantly reminds me why that process is wrong. It's flawed, right? Yes, like you cannot have this mentality and, and, and always be successful, right? So I worry about that because like I love the mentality behind this car. I don't know if it works long term because I don't know if enough people care about they those don't. differences from 90K to 250K. Here's the light at the end of that tunnel. Mercedes current reputation. Right? Mercedes had a great reputation for years and years and years, and it was absolutely cemented in the 80s. So the 1980s Mercedes R&D budget was orders of magnitude greater than anyone else. And so you had cars like the W201, which is the 190E, which that had a five-link rear suspension that was the world's first, and it's still in use today, right? I mean, this car is, that car became the, also the 124 E-Class, and all of the technology just absolutely shifted gears, and Mercedes were out outrageously expensive. Yes. And you adjust it for inflation, a 190, a four-cylinder 190 with a manual and, a, and crank windows was, you know, on the order of $50,000 today. So they were, they were selling in Bentley numbers by com to, today's comparison, but they were engineering led. Lexus came along and destroyed that because Lexus was able to do 90% as good of a product mm, or sometimes yes. even better for half the price or a third of the price. Lucid has is carving its reputation with cars like this right this is genuinely top five best cars on the planet of all time i think from an engineering perspective and so yes. many other perspectives that will translate into sales of less expensive cars provided that lucid lasts long enough financially in business yes to be able to do that and so Every time I talk to any one of the chassis guys or anyone from Lucid, I'm like, this is amazing and I love that you're doing it, <laughs> but stop, please, and concentrate on like the Gravity SUV or other mass market products so that you'll, you'll have the income to, 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 play. to, to play. But they yeah. really do have to prove their metal. And this thing, True. it's done, it's over. Lucid has replaced Mercedes-Benz as the, the maker of the best engineered cars in the world. Well, it, that's... That's a great stopping point, honestly, and I think I don't I don't have anything to disagree with that. I mean, I think it's absolutely incredible. I think there are two videos worth checking out if you haven't yet seen them. One is your drag race, which you probably have seen of this versus the very pretentious way that you say Bugatti. What's the next Chiron? word? <laughs> what would you call it? A I don't know. I just, I'd just be like an American. I'd be like, it's a Chiron. A Chiron. So you should watch Jason's video, which I'll have a link to, of the Chiron versus, now we're in the Lucid Sapphire. Lucid Sapphire. 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 Okay, you were gonna That's one of them. The other one is Savage Geese, recently put out an hour and a half video on the engineering of this yeah. car with interviews of so much of the Lucid team. It's, that was a good video. It's a great video. It's very worth watching. You should check out both. I'll have links. You uh, should also check out, I'm sorry to say. What? what the, you... the Drag Race video is fun and all, 
but it my was cool. Icons episode video on the this Lucid. car because it really explains where Lucid came from as a company. But wasn't that video with a rear single rear? That motor? was the original Dream Edition. But the the point is that this is not Tesla Model S 2.0. The company itself mm. is Tesla 2.0 because it's all of the talent from Tesla taking everything they learned and saying, not how do we make a new, a, another car? Yeah. It's how do we build another company from the ground up with all of the lessons we learned and without, let's call it, the eccentricities of Elon. Um, well, I may or may not include the link to that video, but I'll definitely <laughs> include the links to the other videos. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thank you for having me.